Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh uh, Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen I'm very honored this morning to attend this very important conference I'll speak in English since I don't understand Arabic in a very fluent way I'm very interested to participate in this conference because technology is very important variables in our economic development. And in this short occasion, I'd like to share the experience of my country, Indonesia, in upgrading human capacity and also technological capability in our country. And I'm now in the parliament. This is my third term. I am in the commission dealing with higher education, science, technology, energy, natural resources, and also environmental issues. So my brief presentation will be divided into the following sections. I'll give you a little bit introduction and the analytical framework. And in the third part of the presentation, I will define development as a process of technological learning. And since learning is not a simple process, it takes stages. I will also discuss a little bit about learning stages. And the learning stages is not in isolation. It is in a system called system of innovation. And then experience of Indonesia and some conclusion or lesson that can be learned from all of us. From the background of our conference, many countries, including Indonesia, try to link research, technology, and innovation to issues of sustainable development, which means we do believe that there is no sustainability in our development without upgrading human capacity by using research, technology, and innovation. A necessary condition for the notion of sustainable, I think the president of AZM University stated yesterday about sustainable development, is the continuous development of research capacity of universities, research centers, and also the development of indigenous technological capabilities on the part of economic agents in developing countries. So we have three main actors here, which are university, research center, and also economic agent, which is the private sector. This is the, the framework so that we can evaluate technological development in a country by using this framework, that we believe that wealth generation in open economy is really influenced by industrial competitiveness. And industrial competitiveness is really influenced by technological capability, which is based on knowledge base and intensity of effort of the government. What do we mean by industrial competitiveness? At the national level, what we mean by industrial competitiveness is the ability to produce goods and services that meet the tests of international market. Secondly, expanding real income of citizens and expanding employment opportunities. At the firm level, what we mean by industrial competitiveness is the ability to produce goods and services that defend or expand in international market with long-term profit and growth. So we define industrial competitiveness at the national level and also at the firm level. And what do we mean by technological capability? is the ability to make effective use of knowledge in production, engineering, and innovation. Now, this is one is very important, that why we have, or we should have technological capability building, because by 
technological capability we should enable to assimilate, use, adapt, and change existing knowledge and create new knowledge. So it is not exaggerating to conclude that technological capability is very important determination of our development. So ladies and gentlemen, this is typical linear model of innovation. And some presentation yesterday also mentioned this kind of, of things. It seems then when we are talking about research and development, we have linear model of innovation. Started from invention, then moved to prototype, design, and mass production. But according to the research in this area of technological policy, Technology is not identical with air andy only. When we are talking about technological learning, we should also able to define learning by doing, learning by operating, learning from changing, learning by searching, learning by hiring, learning by training, learning by system performance feedbacks, learning by sharing, learning by field experimentation, and also learning by large-scale project management. Usually when we talk about technology, people tend to reduce the meaning of technological learning only to R&D, the proportion of our R&D in our GDP and so on and so forth. But actually, in reality, technology is not only R&D, but it involves a lot of other mechanisms of learning. So we can imagine that in university, maybe R&D, we do it, but different types of learning, sometimes we don't use that kind of approach at our university. So in the area of technological policy, technological learning is quite different in developed countries, like in the US, in the Europe, compared to most of developing countries. It is true that in developed countries, they have research, R&D, and so on and so forth. But in developing country, reverse engineering sometimes is more important for policymakers. Uh, maybe you can see these technological trajectories. By wrong definition, by having wrong prescription, I think we can be in trouble to formulate our policy in our development. Technological trajectories in industrially advanced countries is quite different in developing countries. So you can imagine, in developed countries like in the US and the uh, Europe countries, sometimes they start from fluid, transition to specific. So they first by invention and then move to commercialization on socialis commercialization. But in developing countries, or in the catching up countries, usually they take technology from specific, move backward, reverse engineering, and then try to assimilate, improve, and then assimilate, improve generation of fluid technology. So they call it reverse engineering. So locus of technological learning in developing countries can be summarized that mainly in industrial firm, since it is estimately related with acquiring knowledge and skill in production process. So technology in most of developing country, not in universities or government research institute, these institutions are mainly relevant for science-based industries typically found in developed countries. I think this is interesting. If we believe that technological capability building is at firm level or industrial level, it is influenced by global linkage, government sector, domestic institutional, formal education, sociocultural, and also financial institution. This is called national innovation system. So I'd like to share in few minutes about technological learning in Indonesia. The first point, in Indonesia, like most of developing countries, 
we still believe in the linear model of innovation. When we talk about technological learning, when we talk about innovation, we tend to define technological learning process simply by R&D, started from university, then business incubation, then commercialization, and so on and so forth. So there is misleading distinction between invention, innovation, and diffusion. The next point, learning in, is perceived as automatic and costless process from invention to diffusion. So they thought that we can learn technology costless and timeless. We only need to buy technology from the shelf in the international technology market. Technology is already there. Developing countries don't have to invent and start it from scratch. We just can buy a technology and techno global technology shelf. But actually, it is not the case. We can easily catch up with developed countries. But actually, in Indonesia, significant technological learning takes place in industrial firms. Private companies, I will give you Texmaco as an example. And also in state-owned enterprises, we call it BUMN in Indonesia. Government, R&D Institute, and universities exist, but like many developing countries, they lack of linkage with industry. This is Texmaco. Starting from textile manufacturers, now becoming industrial machinery and equipment manufacturers, and also vehicle manufacturers. So Texmaco started by selling uh, textile, and because of the demand of the market, they start by producing simple uh, textile machinery, and textile machinery then moves to mother machine, machine tools, and by having machine tools, they then able to create a lot of machines. But ladies and gentlemen, when Texmaco started to create their machine, they didn't ask from university to contribute. They didn't ask professor or PhD from university. They went to Paris, they went to Germany, to the textile fair, and they saw machine there, and the bought machine brought to Indonesia, and put it down and try to imitate step, step by step, and they were able to create their own machine. And then they create machine tool industry by evolution of that trial and, and error, learning by imitating, by changing, they are now able to produce trucks and a lot of machinery equipments. Indonesia, also able from airplane maintenance company to aircraft manufacturers. We are one of the largest archipelago country in the world, and I think we need this kind of industry. And now, alhamdulillah, we are able to produce uh, aircraft by indigenous Indonesian. From ship repair to full flat ship manufacturers. Why Indonesia? is able to produce this kind of industry. One strong point that we have somebody who is trusted and close to the president. His name was Habibi. And Habibi was the Minister of Research and Technology, then became president of Indonesia. Under his guidance, we invested a lot of technological capability building by sending a lot of engineers to Germany, US, Australia, Europe, and so on and so forth. So the lessons. The locus of accumulation of technological learning is in industry, in firms, not in university. Therefore, more resources and policy attention should be directed toward this effort in the developing countries. So since we are in the process of catching up, the main agent of technological development is the firm, is the industry. Developing research and development institution or university is necessary, but as as complementary and should co-evolute with the stage of development in developing countries' firms. If we do believe that main agent of technological innovation is not the university, is not the research center, but the firm and industry, what about academic research? 
And based on our experience, we cannot force somebody to in the university or in the academia because sometimes we are not fair that you should produce something, not only paper, publication, and so on and so forth, but actually by having conference, by having papers, by having publication, we are in the process of creating environment so that our students, our workforce, is uh, our sketching up in the state art of technology. We have communities, and hopefully by providing good workshop, workforce, workers, and so on and so forth, we are, we are going to be able to contribute also to technological capability at the firm level. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Zulkafel Mansha. أنا عم أقول تجربة هي هون مختلفة دائما نتعاطى مع القطاع ونطلب تمويل تجربة الماليزية تختلف عن بعض التجارب هن بيعتبروا الأساس هو الفيرم اللي هي بتاخذ اكسبيرينس هي بتعمل انوفيشن ديسريجاردينج الجامعات قديش بتدفع أو الدولة قديش بتدفع شكرا لي حقيقة انتباهكم وأنا نعتذر كمان عن التأخير آه شكرا دكتور فضل شكرا دكتور ذي الكفل آه ادعو الدكتور عبد الله مئات لتسليم الدرع للضيف